Right. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for blessing us and saving us and loving us. Lord, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come closer to you. Now we ask, Lord God, that you bless every person here with more of you, Lord, open the eyes, ears, and hearts of our understanding that we can we can attain closer intimacy with the Lord our God, the God of love, and our Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Okay, praise God. Today's message is Salmon's, or excuse me, Samson's, Salmon's, uh, Samson's great strength is exposed. There was a, a story in the Bible about Samson, a couple, three or four, three chapters or so, but in any case, he was a pretty big shot guy. He was a, during the book of Judges, uh, he was a ruler. He was one of the uh, judges. He ruled for 20 years as a judge. Uh, and uh, a, the thing about uh, Samson that was a little different than most other folks was that he was a, a Nazarite. Now, um, a Nazarite was, uh, who was born from birth, an angel told his mom he was going to be a Nazarite. A Nazarite is a person who took, took on a special vow. You can take it on at any time in your life, even when you know, you, you, you're you 50 years old and you decide you want to dedicate a certain amount of time to the Lord, you can be taking a Nazarite vow. Uh, and uh, 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 let me just, let's go to the back page. And right under uh, the, the heading there, the commentary number one, the, the, the Nazarite vows were, were this, okay? It was to be dedicated to God. And that dedication means this, serving God, serving God. Okay, and so what he would do, people who it wasn't by birth like Samson, but, but they're 20 years old, decided to dedicate themselves, would say, I'm going to dedicate myself for the next two years to the Lord and take a Nazarite and go, wow, this is for good for men and women, both, okay? So the first, the first of those was it says, dedicated uh, to serving God. No razor shall come upon his head, he has his hair, but his or her, but we use his. No razor shall come upon their, their hair, in other words, can't touch your head, your hair, okay? And your hair, and we just asked someone to remove their hat because it was coming between God and them. Your hair is what comes between you and God, okay? And uh, uh, God is, is in a way using it as a testimonial, all right? So he wants, uh, uh, so there's no, there's no, no razors will come upon his head. That's an indication of his dedication, okay? And uh, he should drink no wine or strong drink no grapes at all, no dried grapes, no, no, no raisins, nothing, nothing at all from the grapes. Okay, you drink none of them at all. Neither eat any unclean thing. That's eat anything that uh, uh, is considered un an unclean animal in the Bible. Various different meanings for that. But, uh, and, uh, and you should not touch any dead body. Well, those are the, uh, that's the Nazarite vow, essentially, okay. And uh, um, you are to uh, take that vow and then remain true to the Lord for that period of time. And when that period of time was done, you were to go to the temple and have all your hair cut off and dedicate it to the Lord in the temple, okay? But Samson was a Nazarite from his youth, okay? I mean, he was born into being a Nazarite, okay, according to the, the angel who talked to his mom. So we have here a guy, Samson. Now, Samson and I, before I got really deeply involved with Samson, uh, and I've still got a lot of questions, okay, my always thought was that Samson, Samson was a womanizer. Right? He was a big, strong guy uh, because he was able to do miraculous things with, with his might. So he was a big, strong guy. And in that sense of the word, he was endowed with the Holy Spirit of God, which allows us to do all these miracles, right? So he was endowed with that. He was a member of Nazarite now, dedicated to the Lord. So... It was a big, strong guy, but it talks about it is women. And this, my impression was that uh, he was in, uh, deeply involved with chasing women all over the place all the time. Okay, and, but look at it in terms of common sense. Common sense says, well, how did this guy remain being a judge, a judge in, uh, of uh, the Israelites for 20 years 
if you were chasing around women all the time and, and, uh, and whoring about and doing, uh, doing those kinds of things that were not biblical. Okay? So, but what, uh, what I've, sh- I've seen now is this. The Bible only shows us three women that he was around. Okay? And I had my, my own thoughts were this guy was a woman, I was around all kinds of women all the time, and of course, so on. But, but it says only three, and so we'll read about them now. We'll start here. Uh, the woman that uh, jilted Samson. You know, there was a woman that actually jilted him. He was supposed to marry her, and uh, she jilted him. <coughs> and he, he didn't, didn't marry her. He got a little bit in badly shape about that. Okay? But it was a woman that he shouldn't have been after in the first place. So let's read uh, uh, the woman that jilted Samson. So we start with uh, Gen- Judges chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, but this was the primary thing for Nazarite, de- dedicated to God. And the rest of the stuff, the little the laws followed, okay? And Samson, now Samson's main, now this is interesting, because all the names in the Bible are very significant. They almost always have a, a meaning attached to them, okay? That, that applies biblically. Samson's name is Sunlight. Now, how about a nice name like that? I mean, how would you like to be, be called Sunlight, you know? I mean, it's a, it's just, a, it's a beautiful name, and it, of course, it refers to the sun, uh, uh, the S O S U N of, of, of God, which is Jesus Christ, and also God Himself, uh, and and the S U Son, and it's just a beautiful kind of a thought. So anyway, here's Samson. His his name is Sunlight, which may, which is kind of like indicates righteousness in that sense of the word. You see what I'm saying? Right, righteousness. This guy was a righteous guy. Well, how was he? Ch- so I, where did I get all this idea? He was chasing these thousands of women all over the place and doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, from, his, from listening to other people, mostly, I got that. <laughs> That's right. He's not to read it all of a sudden. No, he wasn't doing that. <laughs> this guy wasn't doing that at all. Okay? All right. So here, so we read this now. And, and, and Samson went down to Dimoth. Now, this was, he was ruling now. And they went down to Timoth. Can he make sure these people get? Nobody's making sure, of course. Do I have someone back here that works for me that will pass out these things to these people here? They're coming. A little common sense back there, fellas. Like being told you're gonna go to the bathroom, well, wipe three times. What do I have to tell you for? I mean, you're not gonna do that. What's wrong with you? Twice. There's, there was a, uh, a well, anyway, I don't get involved in that. <laughs> there was some controversy about how many times you wipe when you go to the bathroom. Did you guys know that? A couple, three or four, well, more than that, a few years ago, about 10 years ago, a woman, a, a, one of the famous singers, says she only uses two pieces of toilet paper, you know, those two two flaps. That's it! And she was like, and was coming out against all this, anyway, it was a big to-do. And it's funny how people... So, uh, so Samson, so let's go back to the story. And I get all, all carried away here. Uh, and, and Samson went down to Timoth uh, and saw a woman in Timoth of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, Philistine was, was the basic enemies of the Israelites, okay? And their name in the Hebrew means rolling, Migratory, okay, to roll in dust, wallow self, wallow like a pig in self, okay, to roll in migratory, whereas we are supposed to be farmers sowing seed, okay, so we're, we're stationary people, okay, who, who, who have farms, are, 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 are sowing seed uh, and, and doing those things, but the Philistines were rolling migratory, they, they were like Bedouins in, in, the, in, the, in the desert, they, they didn't stop in one place very long. They kept on moving all around, okay? And they were enemies of, and in fact, the Philistines were in power over the Israelites at this time. And Samson went to Timothy, and saw a woman in Timothy, the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I've seen a woman in Timothy, the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? And what's wrong with your own people? They're saying, okay. Well, what's wrong with your own people? Or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines. There you go. Now you know what the Philistines were. Unsaved people. Uncircumcised Philistines. 
the chance of Samson wanting to go take a wife, Timoth, from the uncircumcised Philistine. And he was, he was a judge. And, it, you know, what kind of craziness is this going against God like that? Huh? And Samson said unto his father, in spite of all this, what they said, is it not a, not a woman? What's wrong with you? Don't have, don't we have women? They said, uh, Samson said unto his father, get her for me. And she pleases me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he, that God, sought an occasion against the Philistines. God wanted to move against the Philistines, so he used Samson, okay, all right, to do so. All right. God uses us all here. Every one of us, I'm being used all the time by God. Uh, you are too. Even if you're unsaved, guess what? <laughs> God's still using you. God's still putting you in positions and things to, uh, to, uh, that uh, in, in inevitably help his people. Okay. In fact, uh, well, I didn't get too far into that. But we're all wood. See this? When you enter it, this is the body of Jesus Christ, the tabernacle of Moses. When, here's the only door. When you enter into the door, the first thing you come to is this, this big fire pit on fire, okay? That's a place for sacrifice. First thing you do is you get into, get into the door, okay? I want to see it. Well, I'll do that. Okay, so here, here, let me just draw it for you. Here's this big pit. Fire. And halfway down into it is a is a graded fence. So what you do here, what they do here, this thing was about about six, seven foot tall, okay? But halfway down was a graded graded screen. And what they did is you come in and make your sacrifice to God and it would normally be something that that burns, okay? All right. And they used for fuel of the fire, they used wood. So what happened is the wood would be put in, in, in the Bible. That's people. Men are trees. That's where wood comes from. Everybody knew that, didn't they? Okay, that's where wood comes from, trees, okay? So what they did to use the fuel of this, they used, they used wood, people. And here's how it looks. They put this wood here, like you and me and whatever, to keep the fire hot so they could... Uh, they could uh, <coughs> cook the uh, sacrifices, but uh, all right. And then what happened to this is the wood burned. The wood burned. Okay. In the Bible it says that everybody's going to face fire in the end, even the saved people. Okay. It talks about wood, hay, and stubble, or gold, silver. It, there's uh, six, here's the analogies. Everybody is this: you either uh, are gold, silver, precious stones or you are wood, hay, stubble, okay? Now, gold, silver, and precious stones are all symbols of God. Gold, gold, uh, gold is the symbol of God. Silver is the symbol of Jesus Christ, and precious stones, symbol of his people. But you are, as a, t a tree, as a pe but now a piece of wood, okay? You are gold, silver, precious stones, and wood, hay, and stubble. Well, in the last bit, every one of us is going to face the fire. It talks about, okay, in the, in the, uh, <coughs> in the epistles. We're going to face the fire, and we're all going to get burned. And all that garbage is going to come out of us. Now, what's going to happen is this. We're all going to be placed on, on this, okay, right here, and the burning is going to start. And what's going to happen is we have... Gold, silver, precious stones, and wood, hay, and stubble. Stubble is like about two inches tall. It's where you cut you cut the hay out, and then all the, the left in the ground is is a little stick about this by a bunch of hay that's uh, above the ground. It's called stubble. Now some of this is burnable, and others is not. Guess what part is not burnable? The, all the stuff that relates to God 
is not burnable. And that's gold, silver, and precious stones, okay? So you're on the fire now. Gold, silver, and precious stones, that ain't going no place. That's God, okay? That's God in you. In the stream of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, okay? But also, you have wood, hay, and stubble. Wait a minute now. Gold, silver, and precious stones, those are like good theology. Good theology, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not this, that sort of you know, the, the, the obedient rules, okay? But the wood, hay, and stubble, that's kind of like bad doctrine. That's going to burn all the way. You can't get to heaven with bad doctrine. So what's going to happen is the gold, silver, gold, silver, precious stones are, in this fire, are in effect, in, in that sense of the word, going, going up to heaven in the smoke. But the wood, hay, and stubble, is going, so I mean, the gold, silver, precious stones going up, going up. Wood, hay, and stubble. Wood, hay, falls through the grate, ashes. Wait a minute now. So here in this in this little little uh, uh, golden or excuse me raisin altar of sacrifice, we're seeing a picture of heaven and hell. And us, we're the wood. We're going to get burned, okay? Some of us are going up as vapor, a pleasing smell to the Lord. And the rest of us are the gold, silver, precious stones in us, all the bad doctrine. I got bad doctrine, just like you. It's going to get all cut away. It's going to get burned up, going to ashes this way. Heaven going up, hell going down. That's what the Bible says. It's going to happen to us, and it's illustrated by that little thing right there in the Old Testament, okay? All the bad stuff that you got, okay? Now, I got a lot of bad stuff, so there's lots of things that the Lord is, I, um, when I got saved, I didn't, stop, I didn't stop immediately doing all the bad things, first thing, but I just kind of gradually moved away from all the bad things into the good things, things that God wants, okay? But all those bad things that, I, that I'm not doing, when I get to heaven, they're <laughs> going to be just burned right up, gone, just like that. No remembrance of them at all, nothing, nothing at all. All that's going to be left are all the good things, the gold, silver, and precious stones, the good uh, doctrines and the good things that I've done. That's, that's, that's going to be, be left. And it's hard to me, for me to realize that, see, you folks here have got a little bit of a glimmer of that. You can catch a little bit of it. You can see it makes a little sense. But there are millions and millions of people outside all around us don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Not the, not the slightest idea. And what does that mean? Because we're all going to burn. We're all going to burn. What it means is, those people are all headed down. Here. They have no idea. But this is a serious deal. See, it doesn't seem serious when we're up there and we're, you know, not at church, we're home or whatever place, we're watching television, we're going to do this, we're going to do a fish dinner, we're going to, or we're having some problems, getting some food, or we're having this problem and that problem, and all these little things, then none of this, none of this seems serious, serious. But um, I'll tell you something, dying is serious. When you die, you're going to a different place, baby. Guaranteed, absolutely. And if you don't believe that, you are an idiot. <laughs> and, you, and you will go down the tubes, okay? You're going to go to a different place. Now, the only difference is, and what, you know what Christianity is? Christianity is a philosophy. It's a way of life, okay? We're looking at it like over here in Christians, but you, we had years, I used to, my first college course was a course in philosophy because I wanted to be a philosopher, okay? But what, what, what the different philosophies are, they're ways of living. You live this way, you live that way, you live this way, all the, all, all the different, and all the religions are the same thing. There are different ways of arranging your life to living, okay? Christianity, as far as I can see, is the best one. How come? Because all the things that we're oriented toward is doing good. Now, the other religions don't have that doing good thing. They just have being whatever it is they say, you know, that you know, is going to happen to you, and that's it. But we are oriented toward doing good. 
Now, if you had any any religion in the world, because the other ones don't do that, if you're going to take it and believe it as a way to live, why don't you pick the good way to live? And that's what we have done. We have selected, well, Jesus Christ has selected us, but we have come across, been come across it. We've decided the good way to live is a Christian way to live. Because you can live other different ways, you know, all kinds of different ways of living. All kinds of different ways of living. So, and, and so what happened is, is uh, the saint came back to this, he uh, said, uh, to his father, get her from her, she pleases me. But his, his mother and father knew that it was not that it was of the Lord, that God sought an occasion against the Philistines. He sought something so they could destroy the Philistines because they had they were ruling Israel at that time. Okay, so and so God chose Samson to do that. So nobody knew. Sometimes we're doing things that we don't understand ourselves. Okay, but what happens is, it turns out God knew what was going on. God arranged it the way He wanted it to get it done. So what God had to do is, is He had to do well. The, the, he did. He had to do these things with Samson. Now. So we already established here, Samson, he's a really basically a good guy, good hand on his shoulders, just a real muscular, strong guy, and doing the miracles. How is he doing the miracles? Not by, not by his own muscles. It's the power of God. He can't do all muscle. Uh, he uh, uh, destroyed a lion. And he did, uh, all kinds of, uh, uh, walked off, these, all kinds of strange, all by the power of God. Why was the power of God in Samson? Let me tell you why the power of God was in Samson. Same reason the power of God is inside of you. Dedicated. To God. To serving God. Who dedicated Samson? Well, uh, the angels uh, had uh, appointed him to be uh, uh, a Nazarite. But Samson himself. Maintain his Nazarite status. Okay. Now, Samson himself was dedicated to God. And he was very powerful, did many things. How do you suppose Samson did any of those things at all that he did? And he did, I'm not reading them all to you, but. Uh, all right. Here's the secret. Of, here's, I'm telling you ahead of time the whole story. This is the secret, secret of Samson's success. What's the secret of Samson's success? Dedicated to the Lord, which means he acted through the power of God. And how he did that is he prayed. That's how he did it. Samson prayed. He was a prayer warrior. I thought that a, a long time ago, that the only way he could have done it, but it's true. Samson was a prayer warrior. He prayed all the time. Okay? And it didn't sound like that, because all we're seeing about is with these, these three women here. I'm going to read you about that he was with and all this other stuff. Those are diversions that all uh, uh, people go through. Nobody's perfect. They don't make perfect people, okay? And no matter how holy we get here on this earth, we're still going to have some flaws in us. Nobody is perfect. The only one who was perfect was Jesus Christ. And we can't be that perfect while we're still alive in one piece. So now we're reading about a guy who dedicated himself because he could have, as a, a child, when he grew up, he could have said, I don't want to be a Nazarite. No, he dedicated himself to serving God. And when you serve God, you have power. You have power. You have great power. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 32 in your Bible that you don't have, because I don't have notes for you, but I'll read it to you. Genesis 32, and it's all about another guy, okay? Well, I'm not telling. It's a secret. <laughs> you have to have the, the power. No, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay, it starts at uh, uh, verses uh, uh, 22. This is a fellow named Jacob. Now, Jacob was wandering around. Uh, uh, this is pre 
Samson, Samson the same. I, I don't know which. It's, it's irrelevant. Jacob represents our natural man. Now remember what happened to Jacob. Jacob, who represents our natural man, his name means in Hebrew trickster, supplanter, one who tricks you, okay? That's what his name means. That's how we all were, tricking, trying to make a buck on other people, doing all kinds of things, maneuvering, okay? But Jacob got a, got a name change. Where did he get a name change? Now watch this. And let me read you this thing now, okay? Jacob, this is a, a, a Jacob. It starts with uh, verse 22 in Genesis chapter 32. And Jacob rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabuk. And he took them and he sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And J Jacob now was sending over uh, his his stuff, his belongings to his brother that was coming, Esau, but he was afraid of Esau, okay, but he sent him over, all right, and he sent over them over to work, and he sent them all he had, and Jacob, now here it is, and this is nighttime now, and Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day, and Jacob was left alone. Now, Jacob was uh, was a powerful man at, at this time, and he had had problems with his brother Esau, which represents the flesh, okay, and and uh, so J Jacob uh, got to this this uh, stream, and then he knew his brother was uh, a ways away with a small army. And so what he did, he didn't want to confront his brother. He was having problems with his brother, but he sent gifts to his brother. His he sent Jacob sent his own herds and his families and that uh, to greet uh, uh, to to kind of soften the blow when he meets that Esau coming to him. So here is Esau, his adversary. He thinks coming toward him. And it's nighttime. Now Jacob's all alone in a tent. He sent everybody away. He's alone in a tent. And there the Bible says, and there he wrestled with a man. He wrestled with a man? At nighttime, all alone. And it says he wrestled with a man. What does that say there? No. Okay. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw, when Jacob saw that he prevailed not against the man, oh no, that's incorrect. When he, this man, the man's not really a man. The man's an angel. We find out in a different book. But right now we have to deal with it as if he's a man, okay? But he's an actual angel, okay? And Jacob was left alone there and wrestled with a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when uh, Jacob saw, no, when, when the man saw, when the man saw that he prevailed not against Jacob, Jacob was really wrestling, okay? When the man saw that he prevailed not against Jacob, this, they've been for hours doing this thing, he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. He touches, that's the strongest part of your body, this, this muscle right here, okay? And so he touched the hollow of his thigh, so that he had the limp. In other words, he weakened him. Okay. Right. Uh, the angel weakened Jacob. Jacob got weakened, okay? He was a strong, but he got weakened. That means he got humbled. Because when you're walking like this, that's one thing. When you're walking like this, that's another old deal. And a man who's walking like this, if he has to start walking like this, he's kind of humbled. That's all I'm saying. So the crippling, was, what the crippling effect was to humble him. And that's what the angel did to, to him, okay? Now, and here's what happened. And, and the hollow of Jacob's joint was, uh, thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, the man said to Jacob, let me go for the day breaketh. Jacob had to hold on him somehow. Somehow Jacob had a hold on this angel. How could Jacob have a hold on this angel somehow? All right. Uh, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And the man said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And the man said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For thou, for as a prince thou hast power with God. That's what Israel means. Israel means 
prince with God. For as a prince shall have power with God and with men, and has prevailed. So Jacob became. <laughs> what do I do with these things? Ah, Jacob became Israel. Okay, so, so you try and explain to people, in Sunday school, the kids, this was not a man he wrestled with, but an angel. You have no credibility. Who knows? Right? Could be. Could not have been. Kind of strange having an angel come in, wrestle, and you get power over the angel. I mean, Jacob got power over the angel and and and, and, uh, and held him, and the angel said, "Let me go." And then he, he said, "No, I won't let you go unless you bless me." And so you blessed him, got a name change. So did you. When you are not saved, you are of the Jacob family, unsaved people. When you got saved, you immediately became Israel, just like Jacob, who became Israel. That's a saved guy now, prince with God, rather than a, 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 a trickster, uh, and someone who just, uh, does sneaky things all the time and takes things from you. That's what it used to be. He used to be. Then he became Israel, prince with God. Now the point is, the power he had. Well then, how, well, how is it that you, know, you, can, you, you just have to wrestle that? Now let me show you some other, another verse. Uh, what did I do with it? Yeah. Okay, so now I've got to go to Hosea chapter 12. So my first problem is <laughs> I've got to find it. <laughs> I use the computer so much you, you get out of doing the things manually. Now that's I don't think that's a good thing. I think it's a bad thing. At least it is for me. Let me do Hosea 12:78. Okay. Twelve seventy eight. Okay, that's Ezekiel's final. Now, if I would have been done, if I had this all planned out, I would have had this in a, done in a flash. <laughs> I've got, got it now. Where am I going with it? So, now, so reading just Genesis, we don't have any idea what's going on. He wrestled with a man, as far as the Bible says, okay? And then he had power over this man, and he, who, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the man, got him converted from Jacob to Israel, gave him a new name. That's called, man, that's a power when you can get somebody converted, okay? So, what's the deal? Now, let me read you this Hosea, what Hosea says about that. Hosea chapter 12, verses 2, The Lord hath also a controversy with Judah, and will punish Jacob according to his ways. That's the old man, according to his ways. According to his doings will he, re will he return to him. Now, here it is. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. He took his brother by the heel and the womb. Now that definitely is, is, is Jacob now. So we're identifying who Jacob is. Remember that story when he took uh, uh, Jacob and uh, 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 Esau were, were uh, brothers, and uh, uh, Esau was coming out first, and Jacob took him by the heel. Uh, to, to try and uh, uh, take take his place didn't work, but he, he, he took him by his heel, and it's like he was like thereafter named a trickster because of what he was trying to do. Take someone else's position all the time. Take something that wasn't his. Okay, he took his brother by the heel, the woman by his strength. He had power with God. What do you mean he had power with God? Here it is. Yeah, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He had power over the angel 
I'm talking now literally about Jacob had power of the angel and prevailed and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. He had power over the angel, and he prevailed. Now he's talking now back in Genesis. He had power over the angel, he prevailed. How? He wept and made supplication unto him. He wept and made supplication unto him. How do you do that? Prayer. Prayer. That's your power. And the Bible says he had power with God. Now, wait a minute. All he was now was a saved guy, and he had power with God. Everybody who's saved here, raise your hand. Everybody who's saved, raise your hand. I want you to think a minute before you put it down. You have power with God. You do. And those of you, put your hand down. Those of you who didn't raise your hand don't have power with God. God does not hear your prayers. You can, be, you can pray 24 hours a day, five days a week, for anything and everything in the world, and God doesn't hear a thing because you're not one of his children. He only listens to his children. His children are all born-again people, and it gives you power. What kind of power do you have? You have the power of prayer of asking the creator of the entire universe to do something, and he may even do it <laughs> if it's within what he thinks is good for you. You have a power that no one else has. You have the same power that uh, Jacob had with the angel. You have power with God. When he became Israel, you have power with God. That's, the, that's, that's what, oh, I, we got way off on that one, but that's where, uh, uh, that's what happened to Samson as well. Power with God. That's what happens to every one of you who are who pray to God. Now, if you're, and I know, not as, I bet you if I say, are you praying enough to God that you, you think you're supposed to, if you are, raise your hand. Nobody's going to raise their hand. I'm not. And I should be praying to God. And I, I feel guilty that I'm not praying as much as I should. Uh, be praying to God, okay? I feel guilty that I'm not reading, reading as much in the Bible as I should be, and I'm probably reading more than most of you folks, and still I'm feeling guilty about not reading enough. And I'm praying, and I'm feeling guilty about not praying because I don't pray that much. I, I should be praying to God. I should be exercising that power. So how do you win it? So what's the best way of exercising that power? Let me tell you what I've learned. I don't pray for myself, very little, if at all. I pray for other people. I pray for other people. I pray for God to bless other people, other people that I know. All you people here I prayed for, all you people. I pray, pray in, in groups, I pray individually, I pray them all, just pray for people. And then once in a while, I'll, if, I, if I want something, but God provides everything for me. I have no complaints. So my prayers are going to other people. Now let me ask you something. Let's be objective about that. Whose prayers do you think God is going to find the most godly when you're praying for yourself or praying for other people? <laughs> you see? You want, you want God to, to bless you and to help you. Pray for other people. Don't pray for yourself all the time. God knows what you need, what you don't need, so on and so on. Oh, but I need this, I need this. Forget that. Pray for blessings for other people, that they get sick, you heal them from sickness, heal them and help give them a good, well-balanced mind. <coughs> pray for other people. You'll find your life will change. Because you're praying for other people, God's going to watch out for you. He can say, no, wait a minute, he's praying for other people. So I'll kind of put another angel or two around him. Try to keep him safe, and you, you know what I'm saying. I'm just uh, supposing that, okay? But um, it's a it's a special thing, praying for other people. So, <laughs> so 
let's go now to see if we can't do this. Samson, Samson. Okay, so anyway, the first woman he went to was a woman down at Timoth. He never did marry this woman. He was going to, but he got into an argument with some people at the wedding, a woman in Timoth, and he left the wedding, and, and they, did, they got all mixed and balled up. He went back some, some later time, some later time to collect his wife, and she'd been given to somebody else. So he got real mad about that, but that was the end of that. Then let's go to Judges chapter 16, verses 1 through 3. Okay? Now this is the prostitute. Then, then Samson, as sunlight again, then, Sam, then went Samson to Gaza, and there he saw a harlot, a prostitute, and went in unto her. And when it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson has come thither, and they encompassed, surrounded him, and they wait for him all night. They hated him because they were all Philistines. They hated him. He was killing Philistine people. And they laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying in the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him when he wants to leave the city. They know that they're going to get up and kill him. And Samson lay until midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city, they were two big doors, all right, and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all. He took the whole thing, uh, probably four or five tons of weight there, huge doors in, in the gates of the city, and went away all night with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. In other words, he did a bad thing. They almost got him. Okay. Then what happened? Judges chapter 16, verses 4 and 5. See, now he's, he's been, he, 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 this guy's, now this is throughout his 20 year period now, we're getting toward the end of that period. First, he's, he's jilted at an early age, and then he goes to a prostitute, and then he runs into Delilah. Now, we've all heard about Delilah, right? Oh, yes, Delilah. Okay. Judges 16, uh, verses 4 and 5. And it came to pass afterwards that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarek, whose name was Delilah. Now, Delilah means, her name means, in the Hebrew means languishing. A languishing. Okay, what, is that? what kind of a name is that? Well, in the Bible, lots of most of the time, names are descriptive of the person, okay? Languishing. What does languishing mean? In the strong concordance, languishing means to slacken or be feeble, be oppressed, bring low, dry up, be emptied, be not equal, fail, be impoverished, be made thin. It's a negative thing, okay, and it's, it represents her in terms of what she does to other people, in this case, okay. And she makes them, she slacks them and makes them to be feeble. She's a prostitute, okay. She makes them to be feeble. Uh, women can do that. Uh, to be oppressed, bring low, dry up, be emptied, not equal, fail, be impoverished, be made thin. She's taking from, it's like a vampire, like a vampire, exactly what it is. And vampires are sucking your blood, taking your life away from you, okay? That's what this woman was, uh, Delilah, she was like a vampire, languishing. Well, what does languish mean? Now, let's look in the, the dictionary and see what it means. Footnote A, it means to lose vigor or vitality, to fail in health, become weak, droop. That's what happens to a vampire's victim. It just gets weaker and weaker and weaker, and, and he dies, okay? Uh, become weak, droop, to live under distressing conditions, continue in a state of buffer suffering, uh, to become slack or dull, lose intensity. It's a negative thing all the way. That's what Delilah was. She was she was a self-seeker. She was a prostitute, but she was a self-seeker, and she was very good at what she does because she was on the top of the heap in terms of prostitutes, okay? She apparently had a very lavish place to live, and she was making a lot of money. In other words, she was, she was a prostitute to the elite. Okay? All right. So anyway, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and, and said to her, entice him. Now that entice means in a sinner story to delude him, to deceive him, to flatter him. And they do that to you. Okay? And see where in his great strength lieth. They want to know where his great strength lieth. The lords did. There was five lords of the Philistines. And when there was great second life, I mean, what means we may prevail against him? That means overcome him, because he's been killing their people, and they wanted to kill him, okay? And where in his great strength lieth, what means we, we may prevail, with what means we may prevail to overcome against him? That we may bind him to afflict him, make him suffer. They wanted, this guy, he was a trouble to them. And we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver times five lords, that's 5,500 pieces of silver, okay? So let's go down to, drop down to Judges 16, 
6 and 9. And Delilah said unto Samson, now here she is going to do this thing. What's she going to do? She's going to work her way into him, see? Work her way in, little by little by little. And Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, where is thy great strength lieth? And wherein that thou mightest be bound to afflict thee? How, we, how can we afflict you? Or how can, how can uh, what, where's your great strength come from? And Samson said unto her, if they bind me with seven green whiffs that were never dried, and the Amplified Bible says whiffs means seven fresh gut strings. That's how you make bow strings. You, you take uh, guts and you, uh, well, they call it gut strings. They're later on the bow strings, okay? Seven green whiffs that were never, never dried. Uh, uh, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green whiffs, bow strings, the Amplified says they were, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. So she had guys hidden around waiting, but they could weaken him where he couldn't get out of there. They were going to pounce on him and beat him up really, really bad. <coughs> and then they're abiding in the chamber, and she said unto him, uh, after she's bound him, Samson, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the whist, the bowstrings, as a thread of tow, a twine is broken when it touches a fire. So his strength was not known. So, he lied to her. Samson was, remember now, he, he was dedicated to God, but he wasn't, he wasn't perfect either, okay? So he lied to her, but he lied to her to protect uh, his secret, okay? But, his, but it didn't work. And now what happened is this. Did, did, did Lai give up and say, oh, oh, leave me now? No. The, the Lai wanted the 5,500 pieces of silver. Okay, that was a big deal. So now let's look at Judges chapter 16, verses 10 through 12. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me. You, you have told me lies. Why did you tell me lies? You love me. You're with me all. You come visit me all the time. <coughs> and now you're lying to me. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith might thou, mightest thou be bound? How can, we, how can you be bound? And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that were never occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were lairs in wait abiding in the chamber, but they didn't come out because he break the, 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 uh, the ropes from off his arms like a thread. So here we are, we're having this problem here. Now it happened again on another occasion, Judges chapter 16, 13, 14. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hither tell thou hast mocked me and told me lies. She's this very persistent lady, okay? Uh, and told me lies. Tell me now wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head, that's the hair now, with the web, and there was a a uh, web a, uh, to make rugs and things. They, would ha they had a weaving web up, okay, which is a big, like about as big as that curtain there. And so she fastened it with a pin and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he waked out of sleep and went away with the pin of the beam and with the web. Judges 16, 15, and 17. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee? See, I, I've heard this a few times. <laughs> anyway, how canst thou say that I love thee when, uh, when thy heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not, uh, and, and hast not told me wherein my, thy great strength is. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily, she was daily after him. You know how you get when you get daily after him with her words and urged him that this, and incidentally, I'm not against women. I like women. But this, I'm just telling you, this is what happened here, okay? So don't say, come out just and say, oh, the pastor's against women, this, they would have. Not at all. Not at all. Just tell you the, the circumstances here. And she urged him so that his soul was vexed, that was grieved, troubled unto death, that he told her all his heart. Uh-oh. He told her. He told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I should become weak and be like any other man. And now we have the commentary underneath there, the Nazarite vows, a vow dedicated to serving God, no razor to come upon his head. Now, let me go back to just a moment. 
I tell you something that's really kind of touchy. It says here, uh, in Judges chapter 16, verse 13 and 14, and he's saying, tell her the truth, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the, with the web, he's saying, okay, all right. Now, think about that a minute. If you weave it, it's, that's the hair he's talking about. The seven locks of my head. I have a word here that's an interesting word. It's called locks. Now, that's an interesting word. It means, it, we mean locks of your head. Or it can be used to mean a lock of keeping something secret, like locking a door, or locking a box with treasure in it, or locking this or locking that. And seven is the number of completion. And he said, he's now he's starting to mess with his hair. He says, you know, he's coming real close to the secret now, the real secret. He says, seven locks of my hair. Okay. So if, if, if they're cut, what do those locks represent then, really? Well, their hair is on your head. It's, it's covering your thoughts. And it maybe, I think it maybe means seven uh, standards of living. Now, I tried to find in the Bible where it said uh, uh, seven of anything that God favors, and I couldn't. It says a lot of sevens, now I, and I couldn't find that. But there's a, that word "locks" is is an interesting word because uh, uh, it, it didn't say uh, a twist or twines or anything. It said "locks," which is which is uh, open. <coughs> well, like, and it is. It's, it's the word of God's a secret. I mean, that is a secret. It's locked away. Okay, because if you're unsaved, you can't you can't understand it at all. It just doesn't make any sense. Okay, so there's a lock on it. All right, you stop it that way. Uh, and so I'm I'm having I'm seeing these things here. I don't quite understand. Quite frankly, I don't understand this whole story uh, uh, very clearly. Uh, but every once in a while, when you see a strange word pop up uh, that really doesn't belong there, you wonder, gee. Am I missing something here? Especially when locks has to do with your thoughts. Now, is that your, your head? And unlocking thoughts, and he's, he's uh, I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that to you. One of those things that I'm not able to, uh, God's not given, opened it to me, but something to think about. It's what you have in your head. Okay. So, uh, okay, so here's what happened then. Oh, now we get into it. Judges chapter 16, 18 through 20. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she knew. I got him now. I got it all. She knew. Because she'd been messing with him for probably a long time, I'm guessing. Uh, uh, maybe months to years, okay? She got him. And when Delilah saw that she, he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has shown me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her, and brought money in their hand. So this was a sure thing, because they'd never come up before. But she wasn't sure. This time she was sure. She, she said, bring the money. <laughs> That's what her deal was all about. Yeah. And she made him, and Delilah made uh, uh, Samson to sleep on her knees. And she called for a man while he was sleeping. While Samson was sleeping, she called for a man. And she caused the man to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went out of him, out from him. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee. Say, no, wait a minute, first, what it says? Who began to afflict him? She did. First time she did that. The other time she, she told him to, to wake up, but she didn't afflict him. All right? This time she was so sure of herself that she herself afflicted him. All right? And then... Uh, uh, and his strength went out of him, and she said, The Philistines be upon thee, he woke up of sleep, and said, I will go out as, as uh, other times before and shake myself. And he wished, or he, he understood not that the Lord had departed from him. The Lord had departed when he had 
broken the law of uh, no razor. And the Lord departed from him. Whoa. So here is this massive, muscular boss guy, and what's happening to him? Judges 16, 21 to 22. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Whoa! They put out his eyes. Now what's God telling us? He's telling us, this guy's going to have a lot of trouble because of the lust of his eyes. What was he in trouble with? Women. Three times now. Because he was looking at these beautiful looking women, to him, attractive women, and he was lusting after them, lust of the eyes. And so what they did, because they realized that as well, and that's how come they used the lot because they knew he was lusting after, after they, they, they put out his eyes. And that means he just they put a sheet over him. They put holes in him. They cut him out. He was irreparably blind. That's interesting, isn't it? You see, there's always a penalty. Always a penalty. Now, even with, with Samson, uh, who's a man of God, there's a penalty. Penalty. Huh? I have to admit I have kind of that same problem. So, and that's a difficult thing. Lust of your eyes. Can't walk around like this every time you see a woman. I can't do that. You know? And it's it's from it's from who I used to be. <coughs> All right, so anyway. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, that's chains of brass, and he did grind in the prison house, grind meal. That's what the women did. They had a little little table where they put the, uh, the, the, the hay and the meal anyway, and then they would grind the meal down, the seeds all out and everything. So he was doing that in the prison house. Grinding grain. How be it? What's it say there? How be it what? What's it say? What happened? The hair of his head began to grow back. Ooh. Oh, the hair of his head began to grow back. And they, okay, uh, how be it? The hair of his head began to uh, began to grow again after he was shaven. So he's grinding away. But every day, that hair's coming back. And what does that hair represent now? Because it was power taken away from him. So it's power being given to him. Got it? It was power taken away, and now it's given to him. And it's growing. His power is growing. What kind of power was it? The power of prayer. That's it. The power of prayer. The power of what you say. You have the ability to think, organize words, and speak them out of your mouth. And if you're saved and born again, you are exercising power. Power. Now think, even, even as you are, just uh, you forget about even being saved and born again. Why are you in a position you're in? Because the words that have come out of your mouth over the past years. That's why you're in the position you're in. Nobody's fault except yours. But the Bible says we're all responsible for our own sin, our own faults. And you all are, whatever position you're in, is there because you said whatever you said at such and such a time. And it accumulated, and over the years, this is the result. So you yourself see that you have power, don't you? Even an unsaved person has lots of power. Your power is controlling your life. That's your words. Think about if your power becomes a channel for God's power. Think about that. Because that's what God wants. God wants your words to be his words. He wants your thoughts to be his thoughts. That's what God wants. 
you have the power to do it. And he's willing to give it to you. And now, how did what happened to Samson? What do you think Samson was doing while he while he was there? Here, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> Samson said here he was grinding in the, in the jail, grinding meal. So so table, stone table around like this, and then it has a, a ball on tap that kind of comes around. You're seeing the grinding things, you know. And he's walking around this circle, harnessed in, walk around this circle, pulling that that ball around, grinding the food. And what you what do you think what he's thinking about when he's doing this? What do you think he's thinking about? He keeps thinking about God. <laughs> he keeps thinking about, yes, revenge, okay? He keeps thinking about all these women and all these things that he's been doing, and he's just starting to get his mind straightened out again. But what's happening is the more he's doing this, the more he's thinking, he's coming closer and closer to God because his hair is growing back at the same time. Aha. Uh -huh. So after a period of time now, they wanted to have a, 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 a party there, okay? And so what they had, to, they, they wanted to make, they said, let's make, let's have a big festival, we invite everyone to have a party, it will make sport of Samson. Sport means make fun of, okay? Uh, 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 call them names and, and have them, uh, you know, fight two little elephants or something at one time and all kinds of stupid stuff. Just just make a sport of them to, so they can laugh and uh, watch Samson, okay? That's what they wanted to do. So now he's been down here round, going round and round in this circular thing, grinding grain. That's what you're supposed to do, grind grain. How are you going to find out what's inside the word, all the word, all the seed? He's grinding seed, okay? That, that, that's what that word is there, seed. And you have to take this seed and squeeze it up, grind it, so that you can see what's inside. That's what you do. And the seed is the Word of God, the Bible says. So you're taking all these seeds here, these little seeds, and you're grinding them up in your head. Take them. You're supposed to be grinding them up in your head. And then you can see what they got to say, okay? Well, that's what he was doing. He was grinding seed. And I think he was learning because he was talking to God at the same time. And, and his hair was, hair was growing. So now... Okay, so here it says here, and so uh, 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 16, verse 26, 27, and supposedly the now harmless Samson, because they thought he was harmless now because he was blind. All which did is, is that was his problem. He was having lust of the eyes. Well, they took that away from him. He couldn't think about lust of the eyes anymore, so he was left thinking about God. That was a good thing. And now the supposedly harm, harmless Samson uh, said unto the lad that held him by the hand. Oh, should I go back up there? Pretty sure. Okay, go back up here. Our God deliver our hand. Uh, I'm going to read the whole thing. Uh, 16, 23. And the Lord, then the lords of the Philistines gathered them, themselves together for to offer great sacrifice unto Dagon. That's their fish god. Okay. Their God, and to rejoice, for they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. Big deal. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered our enemies, hath delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may, he may make us sport. And sport means he had to be held in derision, laughed at, mocked at, laughed to scorn. Call him Samson, he's down there all chained up, uh, 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 grinding grain. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And then when they were done making them sport, uh, doing whatever things they they set him between the pillars. They set him between the pillars. So there was a big pillar here. There's lots of people. What's the next verse to say? Twenty. And, and now supposedly the now harmless Samson said unto the Lord that held him by the hand, said they even had a lad holding Samson by the because you would do that with a baby or someone who's harmless, you know. If he didn't think it was harmless, they wouldn't have some little, some young kid, that's adolescent kid, holding his hand. He could have placed They'd have one of their big uh, uh, warriors, okay? So they, and now Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, they thought he was now defenseless, harmless, totally harmless, okay? He said, suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth. 
She said, allow me, please give me a break. Let me, let me feel the pillars where the house stand is. That I might lean upon them. I might lean upon them. This is so worrisome for me. Just to a kid. So the kid said, why not? Okay. Now the house was full of men and women. And all the lords of the Philistines were there, all five. And there were, and there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. So it was a roof, and underneath the roof were probably other important, more important people too. So there were uh, thousands of people there. Thousand, three thousand on the roof itself. Okay, where was Samson? He was under, alongside where the two pillars, main uh, pillars, went into the ground. And he said, "Let me lean against the two pillars." And there were upon uh, on the roof uh, about three thousand men and women. And Samson called upon the Lord, and there it is, exercising power. And Samson called upon the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged to the Philistines for my two eyes. A prayer to God. Finally, okay, and Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, the, the basic two. He took a hold of the two on which, on which the, house, the house stood uh, and on which it, it was borne up. That's, they're making it clear that it's being supported by those two pillars. And the one on his, with his right hand and the other on his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord's and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead, which he slew at his death, were more than they, which he slew in life. Samson. So the dead of the enemy, which he slew at his death, were more than they which he slew in his life. And he served God. So he got a little punishment too, didn't he? Because he was out of line. He lost his eyes. Commentary number one. Samson's strength was his inner resolve to serve God. Hence, the power of his prayers. If you have a resolve, if you decide to serve God, your powers, your, the powers of your prayers are going to increase. That's what God wants. He wants your dedication. I know we read about Hosea. Uh, yeah, I read this before. This is about the other one. Uh, let's go to drop down to footnote B, Ephesians 6.18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the, in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Supplication is a uh, need for prayer, needing prayer. Praying always. See, we're, we're supposed to be praying. Why did God say pray always? Now, you and I know we're not going to pray always, okay, because we don't, okay? But why does God want us to pray always? Because whenever you're praying, you're in touch with God. It's like you're standing here, you know, you and the whole world, and you start praying to God. Uh-oh. Now you got you and God are there standing in the whole world. You follow what I'm saying? Because he will, just like Jesus did when they were uh, 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 crossing the, the, the uh, uh, sea to uh, get to the promised land. He told the disciples to get into the ship and get the other, go to the other side. And they went, and they were in trouble. And the Bible says, because they were in trouble in the ship, I'm just really skimming this. As they, uh, the Bible says that he was about to pass them by. He would have passed them by, Jesus. When he saw him crying in anguish in the ship, he said, go to the other side, crying in anguish. But they cried out to him, and immediately he responded. When you cry out to Father God, <coughs> immediately <coughs> things change. Immediately. It's like God's watching all of us right now. You know, we're all his children, and he's paying attention to us. But if you say Father God, bing, just like this, spotlight comes on you. Now, he's still paying attention to everybody else, but he's paying special attention to you. And if you say Father God, same thing, then... He's paying special attention to you, too. Another spotlight. 
is God's multidimensional that can do that. You're talking to God. You have the ability, everybody here who's saved more again has the ability to talk to God. Talk to God. You ever think about that? You mean I can actually talk to God? Yep. You can do that. All you got to do is believe it. And it's yours. All you have to do is believe it, and it's yours. See, that's what Samson did. <coughs> he believed. He was dedicated. Okay? He had problems, but it all came out for the best. Everything that happened was good. For the best, I should say. You have power with God. Are you ever going to use it? Just kind of sit around and well, I went to some church on Sunday. That's it. I did. It. Now I did good. And God, you know, no, that's not enough. God wants more than your church on Sunday. He wants more of you. How much time do you think that you have left? There are people that might be dead tonight. They're living right here now. Could just drop dead or be killed or something or something happened. Oh, I'm me too. Go. It's like that. Gone. So what's your, what's the point of your life? I mean, what do you think you're here for? For a free trip? Nothing's free. We know that by now. Nothing is free. You're here to serve God. You're going to need to, you need to turn back to God from being what you are, which is a fallen angel. You need to turn back to God, and he will take you back. And you will have power with God. You have power now have more. Jesus Christ said in John 3, 3, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You have to be born again or you cannot be enter into the kingdom of God. Two verses later says, right? You have to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. That's what it means to be born again. Romans 10, 9 says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. That's what God said. So what am I? I'm just telling you what he said. If you believe it, and you're not saved, raise your hand and say this prayer with me. I'll say a prayer first. You can say it after me. You become saved and born again. You just like me, go to heaven. If you don't want to say it, then hey. And if you've never said it, you're not born again, I feel I actually pity you. And I just pray to God that, that you, you wake up before you die. Just gone just like that. And then you never had a chance to say anything. Uh, because you are going to come out of that body. And where are you going to go? Where did Samson go? He did a lot of bad things in his life. Okay. But he went to heaven. No one of us is innocent of anything. We're all, all guilty of doing all kinds of bad things. But. Some of us, our sins are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ when we're going to heaven. And others of us are just going to die in their sins. And that's going to be horrible, horrible, horrible for all eternity. Not just a, like a, an hour. It's like forever. Wow. Big deal. So I ask now, is there anybody tonight, today here who would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for the first time? Please raise your hand. Anybody at all like to receive Jesus Christ for the first time? I'm going to say a prayer. and You can say it with me if you want. I'm, about, I'm going to be talking to the Internet people that uh, uh, all over the world. This is going out to all the world right now. What can I say? This is the most important decision anybody can ever make, make in their entire life. Because it's like saying, well, I'm living this type of a life now, and I think Christianity is a better life. And now I'm going to believe Jesus Christ and follow Christianity. So I want to say this prayer. If you'd like to, uh, uh, here, let's do this. All, those fo all you folks, you've all been sitting here nicely waiting for me, okay? Uh, I'd like for you guys to say this with me, if you would. For those people in the internet congregation, all right. It's like for us, 
it's like it's like just praying to God because God's going to be looking down upon us and, and, and loving you while you're praying. But for the people, we're going to escort these people to the door. They're going to walk through the ones that are in the ha- internet right now. So shall we say this prayer? Let's all stand and do this, shall we? As a token of our appreciation and necessity of God paying attention to us and we and to him. Father God, I confess I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the penalty for all my sins and was resurrected. Thank you, Lord. Father God, please send your son, your seed, your love into my heart to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Father God. Amen. 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 Please be seated. We're going to have one more thing before we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Fred, come forward and say the prayer. Uh, Bless the food we're about to partake of. Oh, yeah, we're going to take up the offering first. All right, thank you. We have loved the Lord. Okay. Where's my my offering? Okay. Okay, you two guys, take it. Take it with him. Two people in the Bible who we saw what their power was. The Bible told us so. The power of Jacob was his prayers, and the power of Samson was his prayers. What does that mean to you? I mean, your prayers are really important to you. They're really, really important to your welfare. You bless the food for us. Go ahead. Dear Lord, thank you for your blessed word and your blessed family. We have loved this one about the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.